Hello, welcome to Follow Everton. Excuse me, I'm Ryan. I'm the host for this show. We're going to be talking about Everton versus Fulham straight away. Let's have a look at the team news. Uh, can you confirm in the comments that you can actually hear me and make sure that all the technical stuff's working today because it is just myself and you guys for the stream. So if you, someone can just give me a quick thumbs up, make sure they can actually hear me. That would be great. Um, team news is in. It was revealed at two o'clock. Um, thanks, Chris, for confirming that the audio is great. Um, Pickford and goal, if this is correct, I'm going to put this on the screen. Pickford and goal. Nathan Patterson at right back. Michael Keane at centre half. Uh, Tarkovsky is the captain. Ashley Young at left back. And then Garner, Onana, Decore, and Garner. Uh, Awobi and Neil Mopay. I mean, I've literally seen that team within. Within literally 20 seconds, while that th while the 30 second uh, warning was coming up, I've got to be honest with you, that's a disappointing team, isn't it? I mean, we've had months, we've had months to prepare for this game uh, in the transfer market, and of course uh, with with preparation and and to, to have Michael Keane at centre half, four central midfielders in there, five actually central midfielders, and Awobi, uh, Garner, Decore, and Onana, and Garner, and then Neil Mopay up front. I mean. It, absolutely sucks. I'm sorry. I don't want to be too negative, but that team absolutely sucks. It really does. Um, let's have a look at the bench. Uh, Virginia, Dan Juma. I mean, if he's trained all week, play him. I mean, what is, what is the, what is the issue with playing him? I mean, you, you, you're literally shoehorning, you're shoehorning James Garner into a, a right wing position. I mean, he didn't score a goal for us last season. Neil Mope scored one goal in 37 games and Awobi scored two goals last season for us in the league. Play Dan Juma up front. Give him 60 minutes. Give him an opportunity to try and make something happen. Um, but no, he, he's, he's done what he's done. He's got five central midfielders in there and, and there's no width. There's no pace. Uh, the bench is Virginia, Dan Juma, as I say. Mikalenko looks like he's going to be kept out of the team, I imagine, by Ashley Young for large spells as long as Young is performing. Uh, Andre Gomez is on the bench. Uh, he's one that Daesh actually name-checked ahead of uh, the press conference, which makes me think he's absolutely going to go at some point. Excuse me. Uh, ben Godfrey, who is, in my opinion, not a footballer. I would have... Uh, yeah, bench is the right place. And Jared Branthwaite, maybe it's too soon. Maybe uh, the manager wants to work with him a little bit lo longer before just throwing him in. Uh, Tom Cannon, who is another one who's who's going to go. Let's be honest, he's going to he's gonna leave on loan because uh, there's talk... We're going to get either Boule Dyer, we're going to get um, uh, Beto or the Etiquette. I mean, I think that's unlikely because he's in the PSG team today, PSG squad. But Cannon, I don't see him sticking around, So, but he's on the bench to make the numbers up. And then Lewis Dobbin, who for some impressed in preseason. And then Tyler Onyango, who for me is, he's poor. Um, but he's just a kid. Um so yeah, I, I'm I'm just gonna see. I'm just gonna share the link here as well. Um, I'm gonna just drop this on the follow Everton group just to see if anyone's about now. As you know, I I, I would absolutely be at the game today, um, but I've had uh, like multiple viruses at the same time or some sort of illness, which is and I'm working tonight and I've had to prioritise just trying to make myself right for for this evening. Um, and I'm not sure with, with what I've got uh, with this stomach issue. It's a, a wise idea for me to go into Goodison Park. So that's why I'm here on the stream with you today. I hope you'll keep me company for the next 40 minutes or so. And I want your thoughts. I want absolutely want your thoughts on those teams, on those lineups. So let's go to the comments and have a look at that first and foremost. Trevor's saying, Mope up front, what a joy. Um yeah, it's just so disappointing, isn't it? It's absolutely infuriating. Uh, Tazul saying, what a shit and lopsided lineup. There's no balance to it. As I said, there's no pace. Uh, Dan Juma on the bench. Yeah. The, Drew, this this is it. This is the big thing here, Drew. Where is he? He's, he, he, he wasn't in the training video uh, that we saw uh, on YouTube yesterday. But but where is the where is the guy? I mean... If he's if he's fit, he's got to at least be on the bench. I can only presume he's he's got another knock. Um, I'm also just going to share this on Twitter as well, just make sure that people know that I am live. Um, live now, reacting 
So team news, lopsided team, lacking width and pace. Where the hell is DCL? I think you all share my sentiments on this. Has anyone got anything positive to say about that team? I mean, the individuals are good, like the the Onana and the Garner, but the positions of having to play in right midfield and away be left midfield. <sighs> Let's have a look. <laughs> Chris is talking about the press release, uh, Kevin Thelwell's press release. That is on the agenda. Taz will say, nothing like Everton to ruin your Saturday. How have we ended up with the worst team the last year? It's an early call for that, Taz. I think we've got, to, we've got to give them a benefit of the doubt. But I, I do agree that on paper, it's a very unbalanced side with a weak bench, lacking pace and width and a focal point. So in a way, I'm kind of glad that I've not gone down to Goodison today, but maybe the, the adrenaline of the crowd will push these players over. Um, Kevin saying, where are the players? Well, Damari Gray is not training with the club, but if he's not being sold and Fulham are getting Adama Traore, why is he not being reintegrated into the group? Um, there's also uh, McNeil, he's out for three weeks with an ankle ligament industry, it, industry injury. Uh, then there isn't really anyone else, is there? We haven't got any other wingers at the club. That's why we're chasing Wilfred Granonto. We'll, we'll come on to, but... I, I, it's just it's just very 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 infuriating um very infuriating keep the comments coming in do me a favor smash the like button I'm, i love the fact it's all the regulars in there we've got tommy peter drew chris all the regulars um i also need to let you know that uh Chris Goodman has left the show. He's working on some other projects. It wasn't going to, it wasn't compatible with the time needed to to put into the show. And also, Jeff has retired from Follow Everton, so he's not going to be part of it this season. I don't know whether he'll come back next season or whatever. But there was a few things. Obviously, his equipment wasn't great, and he was working um, working a lot of, uh, as a truck driver, working through the night, and it became impractical for him anyway in that regard. But He's retired. So the, the the news with that is, uh, although they are the two people that were doing a lot of the post-match reactions for the home games, we've got the away game post-match reactions absolutely boxed off and all the match previews will be fine. Um, but I'd like to ask, and if you're watching this back or you're live, we are looking for someone to come on and uh, support the show. A new pundit and a new host. So what's what would what would I like? I'd like someone who can come on like this and run a stream, basically, um, for the home post-match reactions, which actually is the most important part of running this channel. So it would be a massive, massive role um, and, and a big opportunity for whoever comes in to, to do that. And then another pundit who can come in and support and keep me a little bit more company. Uh, I'm hoping to do a phone-in show tomorrow. So um, tomorrow afternoon. And if there are people who are interested in coming on that and with a view to maybe contributing a little bit more then that's a good opportunity to come and speak to me uh on the show and of course yeah i wish uh chris and jeff absolutely all the best we're on great terms but just chris is working on some other things now and jeff has basically retired and he's, he's got some other things going on with with the shifts and it's just become a little bit impossible to to manage so let me know if you're interested in that um I believe we may have a special guest coming on in a few moments, which would be lovely to see. Uh, Worms, he's saying, I'm not even slightly surprised. Michael Keane and Neil Mopé. It, it's enough to deflate the fans. So all the optimism and the excitement going into Goodison Park today, the thousands of fans will be travelling into the ground. They'll be excited. They'll be thinking DCL, Calvert-Lewin. Uh, you know, he's, he's had a really good summer getting started. Um, Dan Juma's come in, throw him straight in on the on the left wing, and he'll put a worry be on the right, right, and keep the continuity there. And then you get there, and it's Keen. And then you look through, and it's Mope. And then you look through, and it's Garner on the wing, and you're just like, 
fuck off. You've had like you've had months to sort this. I mean, going into a um, going into a game against Fulham, who we should be beating at home, we should be competitive against Fulham. It's like these next fixtures are going to get written off. Um, these next few fixtures are going to get written off because. We haven't got the players fit. We haven't got the, the the players in the squad. I know we're going to talk about transfers in a moment. We'll keep the theme coming through with the transfer news and all that throughout the show. I do believe Amy is going to make an appearance in about five to ten minutes, which would be lovely to have a chat with it. Poor Amy. Um, and obviously, I wasn't expecting her to be involved, having just lost her mum. But it would be nice to have a chat with her and let's make her feel really warm and welcome when she does come on later in the comments. Let's flood those comments with support for her when she comes on. Okay. Um, Kadeem is saying this club is a joke. Are you, are you surprised? Um, Trevor's saying Daesh gone by Xmas. I, I, I don't think so. I think he's been dealt a difficult hand here today with the, with the squad. But he could have started. I, I think he could have started Dan Juma. I think that would have given the fans a bit of a lift. I really do. I think if you, if you put him in, on the wing where we're desperate instead of James Garner, who's not a winger and has never scored for us. You know, it's, it's going to stress people out. Um, some kind words for Jeff in there from Kevin and, and uh, yeah, you can message him on Twitter and ask him what he's wise, if he wants to come back. But I think he's, uh, I think he's, he wants to have a stress-free life now in, uh, in his, in his old age. Um, okay. So what's, what's my, what's my agenda? Here, what we're going to talk about on the show. So, of course, we've got the build up to the Fulham game. I want you to keep the comments coming on that. On that, but I want to firstly talk about the transfer news. That is Wilfred Granonto. He has actually refused um, refused to play for Leeds. They're playing Birmingham this weekend, and he said no. He actually pulled out of the Carabao Cup uh, first or second round. I think it must be first round game uh, midweek. And uh, he said he's, he's not in the right frame of mind. My understanding, and this is widely uh, acknowledged, that Everton have had two bids rejected for him. He's already agreed personal terms for a five-year contract, um, which I believe is 1.7 million euros after tax. So his head has been completely turned. We need a right-sided player. We've got Damari Gray, who's on the sidelines waiting to join Fulham. Now, subsequently, Adama Traore is going to sign for Fulham on a free transfer, which may kibosh the Damari Gray deal, which may imp impact the, the Nonto deal. But Leeds have now issued a statement saying that Nonto um, is not for sale and will be disciplined. Now, to me, that says he's handed in a transfer request. It's been rejected. Uh, he said he wanted to go. He said, I'm not in the right frame of mind. And they've said, you know, discipline. But when is this, guys? When have we ever seen um, a player that truly wants to leave actually genuinely stay and knuckle down? It doesn't happen very often. And, and Everton have been held to ransom by clubs before for the likes of Lukaku and John Stones. And if the player wants to go, the player wants to go. Uh, I don't know what his salary is like at Leeds, but he's an asset. There's probably no point in having a bad apple there. And eventually, you know, if he wants to go, what, what what more can they do? I mean, he's in breach of contract as it stands, but you could say his mental health's all over the place because of this. What do you think? Um, personally, I'd love to see us go back in for him because I think he's exactly what we need. He's a young player. He's a full international. Bags of potential, bags of pace, takes players on, can play on the left, can play on the right. And I think he's only going to get better and better and his value is absolutely going to grow. Um, and and I, I just suspect, to be honest with you guys, I'm being positive here. I think we probably will sign him, and I think it's very rare you see, as I say before, a, a player hand you know who's, who's desperate to go, who doesn't get his move in the end. But it is Everton's prerogative now to 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 um, to stump up the money or stump up some sort of compromise with Leeds in order to get that deal done. So, what do you think? Do you want to see us push forward for Nonto? Can you see him coming in, or would you say that's Unlikely. Uh, Kev saying it'd be a good signing. Um, Chris is saying he's being reprimanded. Yeah, he's, he's in he's in trouble. Yeah, d just a comment that's complete. It's not related, but uh, Drew saying Dan Juma and Branthwaite playing would have appeased the fans. 
uh, and Keane makes people nervous. And 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 I agree with that, Drew. And to be honest, mate, uh, you know, even Neil Mopay would deflate you if you're a fan going into the stadium or if you're a player and you know this guy's not going to score because he doesn't score goals. He's pointless. You might as well stick me up front. Um, I'm just going to see where Young Amy is at. I don't want to really move on too much until Amy's here. So I'm just going to see what the comments are. Should we talk about Harry Kane? This is a big one. Harry Kane leaving... Uh... Sorry, guys, you'll have to bear with me because I am I am very much under the weather. <laughs> Harry Kane has gone to Bayern Munich. Uh, Four-year deal, over 100 million euros. And... Uh, I think it's good for the rest of the league. It's good for us, obviously, because he scores against us nearly every time or he cheats. Um, the, 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 the theatrical thing that he did when Decore touched him uh, against, you know, in that home game against Spurs, the 1-1 draw. But, uh, you know, I think from Kane's perspective, I mean, and I want to know what you guys think, winning trophies in a league where it's a given or being an all-time Premier League record scorer, well... I think the record scorer thing, yeah, it sounds good, but it can be beaten again. I'm not saying it'll be any time soon. And also, how much does that mean? Because the Premier League is basically the old first division. And so it's, is it Jimmy Greaves, is it? Who's actually the, 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 the record goal scorer in top flight football in England. So the record for me is probably, it's nice, but it's a bit of like a booby prize. I think you'd rather win stuff. Uh, have the medals, have the trophies, have the success. Um, he's obviously, he's gone for more money, but I think Spurs did offer him 400 grand a week, or there was a really mad contract off on the table. Uh, and Saudi Arabia probably would have offered him a million quid a week. So I don't think it was, it was obviously slightly motivated by money, but I think mostly about wanting to to win trophies and experience something new. And I'm surprised maybe, that Man United didn't go in for him because I think that would have really pushed United to challenge for the title properly. Properly, Because I think Kane would have scored 30 goals and United haven't really got anyone who does that. And I think they probably would have gone on to really compete with Arsenal and Man City for the for the title if they got him. And the talk was that they wanted him. And then Real Madrid, they lost Benzema. I, I, I think it, he would have gone there, potentially. Harry Kane and, and, and beat an idol. But maybe he feels that Bayern Munich is where he wants to be. The longer contract, the amount of contract, the chance of winning the Champions League. So, yeah, um, I think Tottenham have done well to get the money they have for him. He's got one year left on his contract. Is he replaceable? No. Um I don't know who in world football you could sign to replace him unless you are literally Erling Haaland or the um, Napoli striker, Victor, is it Oshimed? Uh He's good as well, the Nigerian. So I, I, I don't think that Kane can be replaced. And I suspect Spurs now will, will probably finish mid-table, maybe 8th, ninth, or 10th, because I think Chelsea, with the business they're doing, um, you know, they've got players like Lukaku who are not even involved. You know, the, the, the strength and depth in the forward positions, midfield and defence, the amount of money they've spent. It's like they collect, they're collecting footballers like Pokemon cards. It's like every five minutes they've got a new one. Um, and I do believe that um, Chelsea will, will finish above Tottenham this season and, and be a lot more competitive. I feel like Spurs are going to drop off. Does anyone have the score for the... Forest Arsenal game, but I mean, I was watching a little bit of that before uh, supporting Arsenal because I'm 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 in the absolutely having seen that team, I'm completely in the mindset that unfortunately we are in a relegation battle and we need the likes of Forest to lose and Burnley to lose and and it it feels very much like a damage limitation scenario. Um, two 0 thanks to the Blues. Yeah, so that, I mean that would be a good result because we need these we need these teams that are going to be around us to lose. Um, Amy's coming on in a sec, which is great, and then we can move on. But, yeah, let me know what you think about the Harry Kane situation. I think it's good for Everton that he's gone. It's awful for Spurs. Might give Richarlison a go, and I, I would have liked to see maybe Everton offer a loan move for Richarlison this summer with a buy obligation for next uh, window. And that's that's something that we're going to talk about because there is a 
transfer news today with the Udinese striker, Beto, uh, that we were linked with. I really want to wait to, to get Amy's thoughts on this because I feel like it's only right to do that because she'll come on and there'll be nothing to talk about. So let's just have like a, a slight breather for a moment. 68 of you watching live, please smash the like button. Make sure that you subscribe. I have my good friend and the lovely sweetheart in the in the background eating her butty. Should we bring her in? Please, let's flood the comments with a lot of support for Amy. Here she is. Hi. I'm just Hi, uh, I've not got any sauce around my mouth as you threw me in there like that, but I think we're okay. Thank you for coming on. Okay. So, have you got the Everton bug or are you nervous? So, how are you feeling right now about this? Because the team is a bit underwhelming from my perspective. But Yeah, um, ever since I woke up this morning, I've just been nervous anyway. Like, general Everton nerves. But I don't know what I was expecting out of the team. I'd rather, obviously, Branthwaite and Fakeen any day of the week. Um, but I know Daesh knows what he likes and likes what he knows. So I was kind of expecting to be disappointed with that one. I was hoping after Calvert-Lewin's interview, we would see him somewhere around there, but mm. apparently not. But I said when I heard that interview, I thought, Dice is already said he's dodgy. Yeah, so I know he wants them always at full fitness, as good as they can be, ready to go, Dunny, and I suppose like, at the beginning of the season, everyone's still kind of finding the feet. That's when you can afford at best to drop points. Then it's later on where you want them at the fittest when we're getting past Christmas and stuff then, isn't it? So I suppose that's what he's waiting for. But... <coughs> what would you make of that DCL situation though, really? Because he's done an interview. He said he's raring to go. Yeah. Um... And he's got a striker in Neil Mopay who doesn't score goals and doesn't contribute and pisses all the fans off. What, what is the point? At what point do you draw the line and go, this is just beyond a farce? And he said he needs games. Well, yeah, he's only exactly. going to get games by playing him. I think at this point, I'd give him the first game of the season to go, listen, I still don't think you're fully ready because we all know, like we said last year, didn't we, that a lot of it may not just be physical with him as well. Like he keeps going knocked back with injuries and when he's playing, he isn't playing at his best. Not that one season where he was brilliant and we all thought we were all made up with him. I think now it's about bringing back mental strength as well as physical strength in him as well. And if he doesn't think he's 100% ready, then I'm inclined to side with Daish over that if we had another all-in-all-out striker, not Neil Mopa. Yeah. Dan Juma, I wouldn't put him up as an all-in-all-out striker either. So, He'll get hung out to dry quite quickly, wouldn't he? Because he's never yeah. played as a as a sole striker, not in Everton's classic way of leaving <laughs> the man isolated like a like a, a statue up top and, and yeah, hoping. Yeah, but it's just silly things like Pickford always does hoofball, and you can't do that when Neil Mope is up front and he's the same size as me. Like it's just not gonna happen. So if it's gonna <laughs> work, are you five foot six? Man, I am well five foot five and a bit actually, but you know. You're the but, same height as Lionel Messi. Well, he's a different... He's like... That's like Colin Harland and added everybody else up against him. Messi's a man in his own. If Mopé played half the way that Messi would, I probably wouldn't slag him off, to be honest. But he is no Messi, so... He's, he's void of confidence. And and Neil Mopé, for me, Amy, is... If we get these players in that we link with, I'll, I'll quiz you on them in a minute and you can pretend to know who they are. But, but Neil, Neil Mopé... He's a type of player, his stock is as the lowest it could be. Oh, blah. lost her. I'm here. Hello. What's going on? I thought, I thought you'd fucked off then. <laughs> um, Neil Mope, his stock is as low as it could ever be. So we're not going to get a high fee for him when we sell him. So it's a textbook loan deal, isn't it? With a with a buy option or I an obligation if he does well. well. Like You have our fans and we are brilliant fans. I love us to pieces, but we're quite tetchy. And I think if you put a player like Neil Mopey up there who isn't doing his best, he's not very confident, we will quickly diminish confidence in players as well where they think, oh, I'm going to get some shit here if I do bad. 
and I know why we do it obviously as an Everton fan myself <laughs> I can it's the rage of knowing that they're not playing at the best they're not playing for a badge and all that kind of stuff but if he's not going to do it his confidence is not going to go anywhere but lower so he's going to have to produce some results I bet you're glad you stayed at home now I mean I, I w- I've, I've not been well at all as I said to you and it's not like me to miss a game where I'm actually at home. Do you know what I mean? Oh. So I've thrown in the towel and I'm kind of, I'm not glad, but I don't feel as bad about it because I look at that team and I think I'm like, I'm walking up to Goodison now. Every The attitude, the, the atmosphere is going to be people pissed off Yeah, uh, and they should be excited. Now, let's talk about the tactical side of things here, actually, for this Fulham game. Okay, so we've got the five central midfielders, Garner and Awobi are going to play on the wing. But actually, when you've got the width of Ashley Young at left back and the width of your boyfriend, Nathan Patterson, at right back, could we push the two full backs up, provide that width and ask the midfielders who are on the sides like Awobi and Garner to actually just tuck in, support them off the ball, but you've got a bit more license to actually flood the midfield and buzz around and and try and get into the box. In pre-season, I was pleasantly surprised by Ashley Young and his ability to kind of press forward and come up. Patterson's still learning how to do it. You see it in some matches where he's brilliant on the attack, but it's the tracking back for him that's half an issue. And I just think getting him to do both at the minute is a bit... Can leave us open in some ways. Ashley Young, yeah. I don't know how much he's got in the tank to be able to keep consistently running forward, running back, running forward, running back, because we do need to be a defensive team. Like, we're not... He's in good shape. He From is in good shape. I was, like, like, them both, actually. shocked by it, to be fair. But then, like, we look at Coleman, and he's on the other side of 30, and he can do it as well, so it's probably prejudice from me, that half, I'm sorry. Oh. Ageist. Yeah. Looking at him, boy, 38 ancient. That, like, I'm not 25 in December. But <laughs> Yeah. I'm 30 in a few weeks as well. Um, but, yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I think Young is, is in good shape and Patterson in pre-season look sharp. And the two of them have got to basically get forward today and provide that width. And then... But the thing is, the crossing to fucking nobody. I mean, I can sit here and actually get really angry. There's nobody to cross the ball to. There's no pace in that team and there's no, no width. Even if the Let's just actually be like, real here. James Garner's a playmaker from what I've seen of him and everything I look at him, I am more than happy to have him put wherever he wants to go. I trust him wholeheartedly. If <clears> World <throat> War Three was happening tomorrow, I'd trust James Garner to get me out of the building. <laughs> like Anything yeah. you want from that boy, he will do. And he's brilliant at it every time. We've been he's pleasantly impressive. surprised by him all the time. It will be, can be creative as well but neither of them are goal scorers. And that's what you want to put your crosses in, isn't it? It's not someone who can put another chance up there and it goes over the bar or goes absolutely nowhere near. You want I know. a cross to go into the likes of Calvert-Lewin or Dan Juba, maybe. But unfortunately not. Would you take a draw, guys, based on that team in the comments? There's nearly 100 people watching live. Appreciate you. Make sure you like and subscribe loads of regulars and so much love for you amy in particular loads of people are saying hope you're well thinking of you all that sort of stuff appreciate that um the nikki's there in the comments hi nikki hi uh ian and um I'm, I'm, thank you so much gary saying can we be positive uh amy's on again and she's back Sorry. Uh, no gary wants us to be positive uh i think we've given we've given an element of positivity there, Gary, and the fact that we're saying that those two fullbacks can provide width and the other players can come inside and create some overloads in the middle. But then I have to, I, I can't sit here and be absolutely delusional and say, we've got a focal point, we've got pace, we've got someone to cross to, we've got goal scorers. We've got a completely dysfunctional team and a weak bench. Let's if be real. We work with what we've got and we look and we say, right, that's it. That's our starting eleven for the entire season. There is positives we can pick out of them all. We've got some decent playmakers. We've got some strong defensive midfielders. We've got pretty solid defenders. Pretty solid. Because <laughs> we all know, obviously, a lot of people can make mistakes. And one of our issues is probably squad depth still at this point in time. But everybody has their own personal quirks that's got them into that team today who... We may not be looking at like the likes of this Arsenal game where it's been 
constant pressing and beautiful goals scored, we may be looking at some sort yeah. of putting pressure goal. on them and leaving it late. But I have, out of 100% confidence, my Everton confidence is never above 80 anyway. And I have a solid 62% confidence today that we could <laughs> snatch a 1-0. And I think that's perfectly positive on my side of things. Love it. Amy, I've got I've got a little bit of a schedule. We talked about uh, Wilfred Nante. Obviously, we've got the match coming up, so we it, we will keep diverging and relate as much as possible. But uh, talked about Nante. He's he's basically refusing to play for Leeds. He's desperate to join Everton. I've already covered that. Wild. How positive is that? There you go. That's a positive. Wow. As if someone's refusing to play for their team to join our team. That's like. That's from How low Everton the bar really has drunk that that is even like, a thing. Wow, no way. Bring him to us. Let's there, were, him. there were years where, Amy, players were desperate to come to Everton anyway because of what we represented and yeah. the tradition and the ambition. And now I hope coming into the new stadium, that's the sort of thing for a young player, 19, and the opportunity to get himself in the squad for Italy. Are they in the European? I don't know whether they're in the Euros next year, Italy. But, you know, international aspirations and, and to kick on. And I think... You can understand why Willie doesn't want to be in the championship. I think that's brilliant. Someone who wants to play for our club, who's looking at the last two years and going, doesn't matter, it's the project that matters. And I love that. <laughs> exactly. It's the project. Let's let's move on. We've got some other things I want to I want to tickle your brains on. Okay, so apparently today, the breaking news, I, I could do the Jim White impression, but I'm not going to. Um We've been linked with uh, Udinese striker Beto. Uh, no, I now, don't know who he is. Oh, okay. So we were linked with him in Jan. There was bid apparently went in late. Uh, we've monitored him. Obviously, we must have been watching him for the whole sort of summer. Six foot four, quick, strong. Uh, finishing is is great. I mean, I've watched the the clips of him. Uh, based on the clips of him, uh, and I'm just transparent there. I don't sit and watch Italian football. I barely watched the Premier League um, because of what Everton have done to us. But he looks like he could really, he looks like he's he's, a, he's a, a ready to come in and, and start yeah. Premier League games for Everton. He really He'd would love be. it as well, I think. I think like how important a league, how big a league the Premier <laughs> League is, all the records, the recognition you can get from playing in the Premier League, he would snap that up straight away if we could afford to go for him. I'd yeah. be made up with that. I'd take that in a heartbeat. He, um, in real life, he's brilliant. I've seen his clips. I've heard things about him, like in the general boy chat when they're all talking about footballers that they love and I'm sat in the corner like, oh, I remember that one. But also, where I get most of my knowledge from, in Football Manager, the boy scores against me all the time. Every time we play a team that he plays for, I mean, it's like two, three goals a game. Like, he knocks me sick. I see him on the opposition team sheet and I'm like, oh, not you. So Amy. for him to come here in real life. Amy's playing football manager and that's why she keeps dropping out. She, oh, You're not the new Jeff, are you? I know, apparently so. I don't know what's going on with this virgin Wi-Fi. But... Oh, uh, lost too many people to lose you as well. Um, so have you got, do you know anything about him? Uh, you know, what? what's the, what's the style of play? Or you make something up and pretend you do just so no, we look like is, an authority or... He likes to score goals. He's strong. He's really tall. Um, so I think he's quite a Calvert Lewin esque kind of poetry player. But quote me if I'm wrong, doesn't have a horrific injury record. <laughs> like I yeah. think his fitness is quite good as well. Um, he just looks exciting, and that's one of the better things about him. But I'm not going to sit here and start pretending like I, I know him. everything about him either. Like. But he does look like someone you could be excited about seeing on the team sheet, definitely. Obviously, we've put all our eggs in Calvert-Lewin's basket for a few years, but we have to remember that Calvert-Lewin only looked good for two years. One under Carlo Ancelotti when he had Hamas Rodriguez, Gilfi Sigurdsson and uh, Richarlison and Luca Dean all feeding him. And most of his goals were in the six-yard box. So you've got to remember he was, he, he was really, uh, you know, the chances put on a plate for him. And this Everton team now, we don't do that anyway. Well, we need someone who's got maybe a little bit of ingenuity about him. And I think uh, in him and Gononto, I think you're going to get players who've got a little bit of cutting edge. Um, 
the the other the guy the PSG striker uh, Etiquette is involved yeah. today in their squad as a football I, manager yeah. legend. Would you say have you got anything to say on this guy? Um, if you don't, I that's fine. I've seen much about him. I've watched a few of his clips the other day when everyone was getting excited about him, and he looks decent, but. I don't know him from Adam. Like I, I, I'd never heard of his name until last season. I think it was. So yeah. he could be anyone. He could be doing anything. He could be doing cartwheels for all I know. Well, he's I all the same no sort of profile by the looks of him. He's like a very tall yeah. uh, striker with with pace and strength. It's like with the textbook sort of trying to target man. Yeah, a mobile like target man. He's really tall. It, we're looking for, like you just said, textbook target man. And if Calvert Lewin's fit and we have another striker who's a pretty similar build, makeup, and we can <laughs> put a few on his head, then I'm happy to start playing Burnley Ball four four two and seeing what happens with that. I'd love four four two. I think but two strikers, you can't go that's two people. If you've got energy in midfield and you're gonna dominate games and take control of games, four four two is fine. You've got more yeah. men in the box and get players up the pitch, but you've got to have high energy in midfield. I think in Ghana, Onana, Ghana. You've got players, the core eight. You can do that. It won't um, you can do that as well. I'm not bothered. That year under Lampard, when he was playing in the midfield, he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I had no, well, very few issues with him at that time. And yeah. I think given the chance to have two strikers there to receive from him, it looked world class. Mike is saying DCL has done forget him. And I do suspect that, but I, I hope not. And, uh, and just... The fact that we are being linked with this striker, it's a, it's not a great source, to be honest with you. Uh, but they're saying that we're in advanced talks with a loan for an obligation to get um, Beto. And that possibly that would indicate maybe that Calvert-Lewin doesn't have a future here, really, in the grand scheme of things. That Mope is is going to go, Tom Cannon's going to go, and, and it's just Jermitty and, a, and a Calvert-Lewin who can't be relied on. And so we need more names. But I do suspect that the PSG striker, he's involved in the squad today, may may still have a future at PSG. He was on loan at PSG last season and they had a, a buy option, which they did take up. And so it seems strange that three months later, they're then looking to sell him. I don't think they'd sell him. Weird. They'd loan him out for a bit more extra experience, let him work his way into the squad as well. Because PSG, let's be honest, like, to get into a PSG squad, that's like, you know, one of them jobs where you've got to do five interviews for it and, like, two sit-downs with a big manager. That's what PSG is where as well, like a little two-interview process kind of team. PSG normally have oh. the big names as well. Yes, yeah, come to a team. And uh, the big name, you know, the big name and the, the big name and and the big name and, and, and the big name and the, 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 you're there. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> PSG have got uh, the big name uh, players, although Neymar and Mbappe are both being uh, shoe sho shoehorned out. Oh, she's frigging froze. If you could hear, <laughs> are you on Wi Fi or on mobile network? Wi Fi and <laughs> mobile network now. I've just turned it on when my 4G assists, so we'll see what happens there. What you've got an Everton top without the uh, sponsor on? How did you get that? I fit into child's clothing. What size? Kids double XL this one. It's basically like a women's size eight. No, oh, that's good. Do you prefer it without the steak? I mean, you don't have to say that on camera, but um, just nod. You don't like sponsors. Yeah, no. Like I know this season's top going to have the sponsor on, and I'm not too bothered. My dad reckons it looks better with the sponsor on as well, but it was cheaper. That was literally why I did it. Oh, <laughs> you know, I was yeah. like, one minute I can get two for the price of one. Why? Well, what size do you normally? What size are you normally in the the women's? Because um, they're not they're not they're not realistic, are they? They're like no, I'm a twelve is like, like a four. Yeah, like a four to a six, but I have put some weight on recently, so let's say a six to an eight. Oh, I'm just curious to know in case you were to get a top. <laughs> um, if anyone's asking. Yeah, if anyone's asking. Um, the other news, obviously, Chair Mitty, uh, the nineteen-year-old striker. We can't really be, you know chucking it you know all the eggs in his basket he's a new lad portuguese striker he's literally just turned 19 coming from sporting lisbon they've replaced him with jokarez who who was a handful against us yeah um see you later peter uh what, 
what's the what's the situation there then with, with, with that? I mean, do you think that's one for the future, or do you think we're we're actually going to rely on this guy, or do you think it depends on what business we get done? No, I think it's going to be one where we have to nurture him <laughs> and kind of help him hone his craft before he's fully ready to kind of set the world alight. But in a squad like ours, where we've been asking to give the kids a chance for a while, they've obviously gone out and scouted a kid who they thought there's some potential in him. He's absolutely brilliant and brought him on through. And as long as we keep some stability in the back yeah. room as well, and he's not got 42 different managers in six years <laughs> helping yeah. him form this craft, then we should be all right. But it is a four-year contract. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I imagine if he has a good year or two, he'll get a bumper five-year deal straight away. Yeah, he's got and... an option to extend as well, I think. Oh. I seen like people saying five years, but then Sky Sports said it was four, so I just assumed it was the optional year as well. Then. Well, I hope so. Um, we don't have a lot of information on him apart from the fact that he did start a lot of games uh, towards the end of the season for Sporting Lisbon, and we hope this is a player with a massive uh, potential, uh, and not necessarily just because we struggled and couldn't sign anyone else. El Bilal Torre being one of them, but we hope there was. A plan here and he, he was on a list of targets that became available and we took the plunge yeah if he'd have come really late on into like the waning hours of the transfer window i probably would have thought is that a panic buy but it looks like we've scouted him for a while to be fair it looks like he's one that we're quite excited about so i'll trust that Just we trust the hard. process we give we give him farewell the benefit of the doubt yeah. um guys on kevin farewell i love that we've it's led in nicely. Uh, he did an interview. He's done a little thing in the match day program. I'm assuming he wrote it himself, although Everton notorious for having their manager program notes looking very similar, despite whatever manager is actually in charge. It's all the same chat Format. GGP or <laughs> nonsense. Like you could write this yourself. If you go, is it chat, chat GP? Is it chat. You go on there? Yeah. Something like that. You can literally type in, write me a letter about blah, blah, blah. And it'll do like, better than anyone could ever do. You could write write me a letter explaining why Everton Football Club aren't very good and they need to stand a striker and Raniel Mopay, blah, blah, blah. It'd be quite funny. Um, I'm wandering off topic. I'm doing a Gandalf. Uh, just just shifting everyone back in here. He said, because um, I know people will, will be starting to hunt dodgy streams in about five minutes' time, <laughs> me being one of them, but I'm a season ticket holder. I've sold my ticket, so I'm kind of allowed to do that because I would have a right to be at the game anyway. Um <laughs> Amy, uh, Kevin, uh, oh. no, I don't want another Jeff. I, I really I'm sorry, don't. Really I'm sorry. Want another Jeff? It's too probably many. Nothing to do with dodgy streams. Also on my Wi-Fi at the same time at all. Of course, oh, it's not a big problem. Forest have scored two one. Ah, how long left in that, Chris? Um, we're incredibly blind. Yeah. Thelwell said, we are aligned in terms of what is required. We need to be careful, considered and diligent in our training. And we recognise we must do better. We're going to be utilising the free transfer and loan market where necessary, being astute. We need to find the right balance. This window is not easy for us. I'm working hard with the chairman, the board, our recruitment team, and to bring in players under the constraints that we have we've made positive steps with the three signings we've got already uh, a load of waffle about them um that's quite an eloquent way to say that we're skinned no i like that i'm gonna use that <laughs> yeah he's basically life. saying no money when everyone says come to the pub i'm gonna say well there may be some constraints that i'm working against that'll do <laughs> thanks Kev. <laughs> The reason we haven't got a stream today, unfortunately, is because uh, the the we haven't got a we've got a few constraints that we're dealing with in terms of the numbers of people on this channel. Uh, speak of the devil, here he is, the retiree, Mister Thompson. Hi, Mister Thompson. Sorry, Joe. We have announced that you've retired, and the hundred and three people watching have expressed dissatisfaction. Jeff, um, Amy. I, I know Jeff. He he's, he's got too much to say. He probably text me at the full time whistle saying he wants to come on. I know the bloke. Um, 
let's let's have a look here. Uh, he's talking about football and strategy. We are 18 months into a plan that will bring significant long-term benefit. Amy, uh, Amy, what's that plan? 18 months. We're 18 months into a plan that will bring significant long-term benefit. What no, What is that plan? Do we know what that is? I don't, I'm not a clue. It was 18 months. The past 18 months. What have we been doing for that? No, we've been signing uh, young players, strong players, oh Nana and stuff, exactly. But if the 18-month plan's going well, I'm now nervous. Wait, when did Kevin Fairwell come in? Was it 18 Lampard. months ago? Yeah, yeah. He came in with Lampard. Ish. It so it basically got pro progressively worse? Not in terms of signings, though. James Garner. Yeah. Oh Nana. We're going to yeah. ignore Mopey. Everyone Those two Mopey. both need to step up this season and become McNeil. actual. McNeil. Yeah. McNeil's been brilliant for us. Um, yeah. Ashley Young looked all right in pre-season. Um, he's not been terrible with the players he is signing, really. It's just the output on the pitch and possibly having two managers in 18 months who have two very different ideas may stall that plan a little bit. Maybe. Yeah. How's that uh, positivity? There we go. I, I think the Sean Dye sort of, the, the way he wants to play is definitely, I think, more in, in keeping with what Everton, <laughs> with what Everton's yeah. philosophy and, you know, the fast football, get it direct, cross it. And I just think we haven't got the players. I think I'm excited to see what Sean Dyche can do when he gets his signings in and when given a bit of time. And I think yeah. he deserves that. Although there were some parts last season where I thought we were absolutely done. Uh, but I, I, he definitely deserves the benefit of the doubt. I'm just going to move back onto this, if that's okay, because I'm cautious of time. Um, he said he's found some loans for the young players to give them some game time. Um, we've gone to mostly League Two and League One clubs. You could tell really in the preseason games that the youngsters needed loans. They weren't. There wasn't really anyone there who was ready, who was jumping out at me. Um, I, again, I don't know if you've got to saw any of the preseason games to comment on that, but I sent a couple of them. To be fair, um, <laughs> they're all the same basically. Yeah, they were pretty much leaving it late, nab a goal when you can, and don't let the idea. <sighs> I'm sorry. Get I'm off sorry. Jeff's Wi-Fi. I'm sorry. Know. I'll ring Virgin after the match tonight. And Next I'll do that thing my dad does where he's like, I'll leave you and the like, have the best Wi-Fi for £2 a month, Mark. I'll get my dad to ring them. There we go. Amy, hey, we've got Liam. Liam's asking about the captaincy. Tarkovsky's the, 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 the on-pitch captain now when uh, when oh. um, Coleman is uh, injured. But I, I don't mind that. I, I think you've got to have someone who can get in the face of the referee and actually be, you know, Yeah, you, know, you need an disruptive outfield player. In that way to be yeah. your captain really don't you um the way that it can do is you have your three choice of captains so like you have a backup for your vice captain as well so it could be that coleman's captain but he knows he's going to be out for a while so we said right it's between pickford and tarky right now and then when coleman comes back pickford retires the armband back to coleman and tarky possibly like he's yeah. our third choice but if he's actual captain and Taki's playing, then I'm boggled. I don't know. You can't really start changing your captains around, can you? Like that? No, I, I agree. But I, I, I think Tarkovsky, you know, he's going to be relied on to lead that back line now. And yeah. Connor Cody obviously isn't there. I think he wore the armband once or twice. But yeah, yeah I know. I, I, I would have much rather had Connor Cody over Ben Godfrey or Mason Holgate. But let's yeah, not go down that, that black hole. I probably wouldn't have took him for eight and a half million. I took him for the four, but not the yeah. eight and a half. Well, there's nothing to say it actually was four. For all we know, it was actually eight million. You know, and we didn't want to pay it, so Leicester paid it. We don't actually know. No one knows. We're, we're not. We're not in the know here, are we? No, I'm clueless. Unless it comes to a football manager, but basically the way I interpret this, and we will wrap up in about four minutes, and I will let you get a stream. And if you, you get stuck, you can message me on Twitter. I'll find you one. But you, the way I've interpreted that whole uh, interview is that you know, some selling clubs. Uh, this, sorry, actually, I should read this out first. Selling clubs will always seek the best price possible for their best players, and that often means extended negotiations to acquire new signings at an appropriate and fair price. We have demonstrated across several transfer windows in the past years that we will not expose the club to risk through overinflated fees 
for players that would provide little or no return in that investment in the future. So to me, that's saying young players, we would take more of a risk. We won't do it with players with little to no return on investment, maybe in terms of selling them on. But I, I suppose that is more toward, towards what they can provide. <laughs> it must be because why would you be even looking at players regardless if they weren't good enough to have an impact on the pitch now? I think he's talking about little to no investment in the future. Um, selling clubs seek the best price possible for the best players. So that to me is saying we're looking at clubs, best players like the Boulay Dyer at Salo Tidiana or whatever they're called, Sardines in Italy, um, like um, Beto Udinese, the best players we're going for. So uh, they want the best possible price. It's taken a long time to get them because we want them at a fair price. To me, it seems like we're waiting for them to drop prices, uh, waiting for um, the players themselves to push for moves and we're relying on their desire to come to the Premier League as well to engineer this. And the way it's talking here overall, uh, thanks, Jeff, Sal Saleh Nitana. Um, who comes up with these names? Just call it St. Helens and I've done with it. Yeah. Um, I was in St. Helens. I, was, I did a wedding in the McCure two weeks ago. And I'm oh, actually getting there for a few weeks He's as well. He's Hilton, that's posh. That's posh we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The drinks reception was in that Weatherspoonsy type area. What, like in the actual Weatherspoons? No, it's, it looks like a little mini oh, okay. Weatherspoons no, within okay. the hotel. No, yeah, I'm going way off top. The, the, Thelwell is basically, um, he, he he's telling me in my way that we're looking at good players. It's going to take time towards the end of the window and, you know, um, we'll, we'll get them in, but just be patient, basically. Okay. Yeah? I can say it, though. And very finally, uh, Amy's gone, but I'm just going to continue here. Colin Chung did his interview. He's the interim CEO. And just very briefly, Colin Chung did an interview. He's the CEO temporarily. And uh, just very briefly, uh, just very briefly, he said that we're going to seek your input on to how the supporters are relocated the season tickets next season. Uh, so, you know, people in the park, I know you like the park end where I sit. And if you're a season ticket holder there, could you move to the opposite, the Everton home end stand next season? And just basically, how would they do it? So they'll send a survey, what the fans want. Obviously, I've got girlfriend, brother, etc. all going with season tickets. Mabsy might be nice to get a group of eight together and they might ask people, do you want to move? Do you want to be in the same stand? I think it's got to be like for like first and foremost. And then you put in a request and say, actually, I want to go with this person, this person, this person, and move. I, 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 it's going to be an absolute nightmare, isn't it, for them to do? Yeah, I think what they're going to do, a few people um, have had the opportunity to go to live buildings and pick their seats already. Um, I'm not going to name any names as not to cause fan friction. But like a few people who are, you know, like quite well-known supporters and people who sit in like direct Super fans. yeah stuff like that they've been said like if you're a season ticket holder come and choose your seats it's not many people at all like a handful of people probably people who sit in like the lounges and stuff like that more often than not have been asked like yeah where do you want to go so i think they're just going to say to you where do you want to go yes no kind of like imagine this Right, uh, Amy, I know you've got a season ticket in the Gladys just behind the goal in the middle and it's really good seat. Uh, but unfortunately, just to way it is with the new stadium, I've got a great seat for you near the corner flag on the back row in the corner. Uh, you'll love it. You're going to move there. And if you want to move, you can pay us an extra 500 quid. Yeah, or, or do one. Um, th there might be a little bit of that going on. Uh, who That's knows? why I'm quite glad that I'm just going to get told where I'm going and I'll be like, thanks, that'll do me. No asshole there. I don't Amy, I think the match is coming on in three minutes. I've really enjoyed speaking to you. Um, Thank you for coming on. I appreciate that. Uh, if, do you need me to send you a link? No. Okay. I need one. <laughs> I'm stuck at home with all these people in the comments. There's no a, offense. I love them. A, a account I, on Twitter that sorts us all out quite often um, who has put a stream link up for you all. Um, 
I don't want to okay. name it, so my account gets banned, but it's something to do with tickets. Okay. Predictions then. We've let's have a 60 second predictions in the comments. We've got 61 still watching. Jeff Thompson, he's gone with a nil-nil first half. Dan Juma off the bench to win it late. Love that. Um, I'd nil. prefer it to be a little bit earlier. Amy, what's your prediction? Uh one nil cut off is. I'm going to go for a 1-0 as well. It's going to be a penalty. It's going to be scored yeah, by the Yeah, we're going to like squeeze it right out and it'll be in like the 70th minute or something stupid. Chris, like Chris has gone with a 1-1. Chris Litch. Uh, and I think people are agreeing with that. Like, right, let's get this wrapped up. We probably should have done Watch Along. That would have been utterly hilarious. We could have had the stream on and then basically... But we know what... Oh, fucking oh, Keen again. You know, we're you coming out the it. tunnel. Oh, they're coming out of the tunnel. Right, guys, thank you so much. We've got Gary, uh, we've got Eugene, he's gone with a 4 0 Everton win. We've got Kano, he's gone with a 1 0 Everton win. We've got Sad, he's gone with a 1 0 Everton win. And we've got Wormy with a 1 0 Everton win. And Kevin's gone with a 2 0 Everton win. We love and leave you. Amy, thank you so much. You've been absolutely brilliant. Thank you for all your time, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you at full time. It'll be Stevie on the post match reaction. Um, and maybe Amy, if she feels up to it, I don't know. If she's got anything going on. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being so kind as well. I can see all your well wishes. It means a lot. But up the toffees, let's go. They love you. We love you. See you soon. <laughs> see you soon. Bye.